Hey, what's going on guys? My name is John Park and welcome to another series of tutorials. For today's demonstration, I'm going to teach you guys or share my insight on how to compose a shot in black and white. Typically the way I like to start is actually understanding and studying uh, existing film frames. So let's go ahead and open up some files um, of some existing film studies or film shots. And here I have just a couple of images that I picked out from a classic movie um, from Ben Hur. It's it's, a, it's an old it's an older film, but I wanted to really pick out a, just a couple of shots that I thought were interesting to me, um, and we we are going to basically analyze and look at the graphic nature. I'm going to show you another shot set of shots that I picked out. Here's a second set of shots that I thought was really interesting in terms of camera. You know, really simple composition and looking at light and shadow compositions here. So when you guys are looking at this stuff, or typically when I look at it, um, there's a couple of things that do come to mind. Uh, one is generally the framing device of our subject matter, whether it's a character or a building, um, and also how it is actually being framed using light and shadow. So that's kind of the goal for today's demonstration is how to simplify and break that down. So I like to actually combine these. I'm gonna actually get both of these and convert them into black and white. I'm grab this first one here. Let's turn it black and white and the second one as well. And what we're gonna do here is just by turning it black and white, we start to quickly evaluate and understand the lights and darks and also areas of high contrast versus areas of very very low contrast here and that's some of the things that we want to just start keeping note of especially when we start uh, start our sketches here and just to get an exaggerated feel I'm actually going to bump up my contrast to really get rid of any subtle midtones and just really understand and look at just extreme light and darks. And <coughs> typically when I do these types of studies, I like to overexpose the shot just so that I can understand and analyze the, um, the graphic nature more than the subtleties of the shots. And that's going to be the goal for today. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to duplicate this this layer and let's go ahead and make our background a little darker and I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a blank white canvas for these guys um, for today's for day for today's tools and demonstration I'm only gonna be using three three types of tools um, which is gonna be kinda of the slanted hard brush um, I'm gonna use a soft brush just for gradients and last but not least I'm going to use a regular hard brush with dynamic settings um, these are going to be the three tools mainly I'm going to use this for um, drawing and this right here is just for gradients or or um, I guess uh, transitions transitions and grads And this right here is just for graphic. Graphic marker. We'll just call it a marker. Basically, I'm gonna use this like the way I would use a Sharpie of some sort, or like a big a big thick marker. <coughs> so the first thing I'm gonna take note of is in my first scene, I just want to really look at just the basics of our composition. Now, if we look at and analyze our shot here, make another layer. Let's go ahead and save this out. And if we look at just the basic light and dark areas on these frames, we can quickly identify that it has a certain identifiable graphic shape here. There's white, there's another block here, 
and even this here is also a graphic shape. Now, <clears throat> any subtlety I really want to just kind of eliminate and just simplify and group as much light and dark as I can. So even here, we're going to have a figure which is going to be predominantly in light. We have some a little bit of architecture that's being shown and we have our main figure here in light and also the ground <coughs> everything else I'm gonna simplify and either make it darker or just show indications of the architecture using some of our soft brush but mainly we're gonna keep it black and white only two values same here we have our light on the face and we have our light hitting here and there's just a gradation right grad and basically this is just to show light transitions and that's kind of the extent of it we can go even more in depth and show little gradations of the face here as well um, but that's kind of what I want to analyze and break down now when we do our <clears throat> our study here a couple of ways we can do it we can actually start off by actually doing a quick sketch to understand our drawing here I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch out just really really simply just the major areas of light and even just some of the uh, <clears throat> obvious structures and elements like tables and stuff like that and this doesn't have to be the most perfect drawing it's something just to kind of keep note of the basic composition and I'm just going to simplify our characters and some of the facial features that I'm seeing into very very simple graphic shapes and even here on the face let's go ahead and turn off this this red mark layer um, I'm even going to simplify the way we see the figure here I'm almost thinking that you know since the figure is actually being backlit by this open door I think we're almost just only going to see his silhouette of the face his hand gesture and that's basically about it and I just want to <clears throat> treat everything as a graphic design more so than you know depicting all of the details and elements because this is all about lighting so it's all about kind of how it graphically is going to read we have some lighter shapes here and so forth okay so there we go we have that let's go ahead and do the second set here and again the goal for me is really just <clears throat> to understand lighting just through pure graphic design and that's that's kind of that's all I'm really after you know th anything anything beyond that is gonna be you know more of a trying to get the exactness of all the architecture or trying to have a really nice illustration but since these are, these are studies I'm gonna keep it fairly 
objective for myself. And it's up to you guys um, in terms of how much, how polished you want to make this, but the more graphic, the better. I'm even going to simplify a lot of the details here, like just right in the door. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to say that, you know, it's almost better just to have like a a graphic, a simple graphic like that. And even the door here might be nice to have a more of a simple graphic as well. Just to really simplify what we see here. Because it's going to get really complicated really quickly. And I just want to mark down all of my obvious dark areas and my light areas. And you're going to see a lot of this right here where this is going to be a mid-tone. And this stuff here, we're actually just going to uh, consolidate and just treat this more as a, as a dark a dark value rather than a mid-tone value. A lot of this stuff I'm actually going to really darken. But my lights is going to be the belt, the hands, the areas of the face and neck. Okay, so that's kind of that's kind of a really simple basic sketch, just the way I'm doing it. Okay, nothing complex, right? It's pretty pretty uh, pretty simple. Something that I, I have very you know much confidence that you know most people can do this. Okay, and then we're gonna do our last image here and again it doesn't have to be the most perfectly accurate you know anatomy and I'm probably just saying this because you know my anatomy is horrible um, however I just want to get the basics of light and dark this gets a little fussy so we're gonna go ahead and simplify some of these lines here This kind of reminds me of like, uh, you know, when our illustration teachers back in school would ask us to basically mark down the light and shadow shapes of a face before you go and paint. It always looked kind of strange to me, like doing this exercise because it's kind of like you're you're trying to illustrate by creating like these little puzzle pieces it's like the most bizarre thing
but it helped you to understand just the shapes. That was that was the that was a really good part about that exercise. So again, when we get into our actual um, our actual you know black and white marking, then we can start to refine the shapes of the shadow shapes and any specific details that we see. But for the most part, I just want to kind of get a general vibe of the overall composition and shot. Make a selection here. We're just going to move it down in frame a little bit. And there we have it. This is kind of our basic underlay of the shot. And now I'm going to basically paint underneath this. And I'm going to use my flat brush here to start painting. Okay. go ahead and get started. So with something like this, I'm literally going to go as graphic as just putting black. Like grab black graphic shapes here. Okay. And these I'm going to treat this as all graphic shapes. And we want to go really, really simple at first, okay? I just want you guys to just simplify everything and treat it as graphically as you can. If you want, if it helps, what we can do is we can actually lighten and put this on more of a red so you can see your, your marks a bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and just... Turn off our layers here so you guys can see the entire image. And it's just kind of like uh, filling it in. So, all we're doing here. Now, I like to just always start off with very, very hard. <clears throat> hard to find details um, such as the shadows things like that of that nature before adding in all of my my light information just to keep the process really really simple and have my light here on the hand so I'm gonna leave that leave a little bit of that light here now again this is probably not the exact shape but it's just a good reminder of where light is going to be on that arm Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let's add this little dark shadow here. And he's kind of holding this tool. And the face here of this character, I'm going to try to simplify <clears throat> the face here to kind of get as much of the features in a very graphic, in a graphic manner. <clears throat> 
again anything that's mid-tone we have to make a very clear judgment whether we want to uh, make it into a black graphic or we're gonna keep it as a lighter shape and so that's gonna be that's gonna be the real challenge of, of this exercise is just consolidating and editing it down for readability and this is the reason why I love doing these uh, these studies is because it gives us an opportunity to evaluate all the shots with with kind of a a different approach and different perspective on what what to simplify what to take from it and what to eliminate and even these shields here I know that they have tons of details but it probably won't do much, do us any good so I'm actually gonna start off by going really really simple bounce around a little bit there and then basically simplify this stuff here And there's these all these other indication of detail, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of uh, abstractly try to make mark note of that. And there's all this like appliances here, like that's getting quite a bit of reflectivity on the top, so we can actually. Um, add a little bit of that the details from the door We'll go ahead and draw that in and erase away anywhere where we don't need those lines. And I generally treat these kind of like these, uh, like these little graphic marker, marker studies. If you guys haven't really, um, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, uh, basically I used to do, the, it, back in school we actually used to do these, uh, these little sharpie uh, marker studies using only two values to do a series of just film studies or these little compositions just understand to get a better understanding of how how light and shadow uh, works in in a more filmic scenario and that's kind of basically what I'm trying to recreate here that same technique in Photoshop and just a simplification of of how we see composition in light and dark. I know it's like I, I'm like a broken record and I've probably said that like 12 times um, but there's there is a lot of value in just how we how we simplify and, and see things. So when I turn off the, my my red marks here you can start to see just the simple clean graphic nature of this right and we start to understand exactly areas of of um, of just light and dark.
I kind of like this uh, abstract nature of you know basically the our character here in the background getting a little bit getting a little bit um, kind of lost from the the highlight you definitely want to play with that okay now since I have this here it's a good time to just kind of refine just a couple of things like around the face and any detail like that Maybe punch in some uh, some highlight details here on the clothing. Anything that that would be worth noting. And keep in mind, like notice the way I'm I'm actually simplifying my um, my graphic shapes. I'm consolidating and grouping things. Now where the where the soft brush comes in and this is where I'm going to actually do this very very lightly is I'm going to make a selection in just in certain areas um, however I actually just want to use a soft brush just to help with softening some of the light here that's all I really really need it for if we want we can just create a note layer But this is all it's this is all I'm really doing it. How I'm gonna treat it. It's just to kind of showcase areas of soft soft edges. I'm gonna go ahead and erase away areas where I don't need it. And I know it's kinda like, you know, it looks like we're treating it as a midtone, but um you know it's just for gradation purposes. That's all I'm really doing, doing it for. But that way, if it helps consolidate any light form that we have, because I know it can get really tricky if certain certain areas have a lot of complex soft lighting, we can use the soft brush here to just kind of give us the illusion of softer light seeping through but again I want to keep things relatively in this in this kind of two-tone look Find this here. And there you go, there you have it. There's our first little study. You know, relatively simple. There's our first uh first little film study here and you just want to look at you know when you squint your eyes you want to be able to see just kind of the the same values here and that's all I'm trying to I'm, that's all I'm really trying to capture is the likeness of it and you can just see like when I turn off this this little layer here just like a little bit of that soft soft lighting will help if you're if you're ever confused about how to consolidate some areas alright let's move on to the next one <clears throat> 
create another layer and then again I'm just gonna simplify and block everything down um, I'm just gonna kind of go with the same routine and same motion and this stuff is you know it, it's something that you can do while at a leisurely pace you know hang out you can watch movies while doing this so that's so why I, I love I love kinda of doing these studies it it allows for a lot of great um, you know you're you're still you're still doing art you're still you're still practicing and studying and getting a lot from it but you're you're not you're not so stressed out about all the details or um, the thinking aspect of it as much because it's, it's a lot of observation that's all it really is you know you can just you can just crank up some music and just kinda jam you know Go ahead and save. Now there are areas of obvious dark and light here, um, so let's just go ahead and simplify where we see those dark areas. You know, a lot of this stuff here too is is something that I, I just want to <clears throat> just simplify and just make put this all in dark because we we it will allow us to <clears throat> just look at the pure graphic nature. Now, anywhere where it's like a gradient, this is where I want you guys to look at it from your own point of view and see what what you want to add. But this is I don't want us to get into the habit of of using the gradient to create midtones because this starts to kind of defeat the purpose of that graphic look it starts to get into the realm of rendering so I'm only going to use this if if we need to help amplify just some soft edges or some soft lighting it's the only time I'm going to do that so in this case if this background here is dark and we need kind of that soft lighting or that edge then I will just go ahead and make a note of that just in this area here but for the most part definitely want to keep it as graphic as I can I don't want to go away from from the main read So a lot of this stuff here, I almost want just a simple darker graphic. And anything else around it, like the uh, the pillars and stuff like that, definitely want to simplify as well
Let's go ahead and simplify all this stuff. Put it in dark. I might just end up actually um, getting rid of this this gradient layer because all it's really doing is just creating midtones right now. Um, so we'll just we'll just turn it off for now. And the reason why I, I chose to do that is because I only want our eyes. I only want us to really pay attention to. Um, just a graphic read of things and that's that's the most important thing it's just how do we graphically perceive things If, if there's some like wardrobe detail, we'll try to try to get that as much as we can. And then around the head here, I can choose to keep it light just to play off that edge right here and we do something like that So we can simplify all the stuff that we see here. Just the basic architecture of this stuff. And all of this here, let's just go ahead and consolidate and really keep it simple. Simplicity is, is definitely the theme here today. I'm using the, the softness actually of my, my brush here to create that. That's kind of what I wanted to create actually. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily the, the gradient, but it was kind of that soft that soft marker airbrush gradient here. I do apologize for the confusion. Let's get this like weird post right here. And the way I'm doing that is I'm actually right clicking and I'm holding down and basically painting 
I'm holding down here and I'm pressing right click and alt and I can actually change the softness of my brush. This is a really really nice handy tool for anyone that's interested. Okay, now let's get the rest of our our furniture here. So this this one's this one is fairly complex, right? Imagine how how much more complicated it would be if we were to have to to render out all of these details. It would be insane just to do it in in just to get the accuracy of all this. some of that light here and that's kind of that's kind of the soft edge that I wanted here just these really um, very obvious tones and just the softness here the light. Just to help us with that nice graphic read. Get in the graphic of the hair. The hairline. We'll, we'll move on after this here. Make sure that you guys aren't getting too bored because again these are these are studies after all so I think once I show you a couple of these you, you basically understand how how I'm approaching all this because it's just it's just a repetition from here Let's go ahead and turn off our red red marks. And fix any of the any of the features here. Ah, I don't want to zoom in too much, but those eye sockets really bug bugging me. I 
again for those who are who are very very precise you know feel free to do this only only if it really if you really need to But yeah, that's kind of the basic concept of this, of these studies. Use uh, my soft, soft brush just to get some of these like soft shadows here, cutting through. Shadows always do like a lot of strange, ambiguous things. So I definitely want to try to capture that. And if you guys don't know, um, there's a couple of books that I'd love to recommend to you guys for this kind of. Uh, for this type of stuff, there's a book by uh, called Framed Ink by Marcus Mateo. Very very solid book. Really great book on cinematography, understanding camera lens, and and illustration stuff like this. You know, like uh, uh, Marcus Mateo actually goes over a lot of a lot of great design principles and shot principles um, that actually cover a lot of of basic fundamentals such as what I'm showing here. Highly recommended. But this is this is kind of the this type of stuff that I would study when we build up to our keyframe illustration. You know, it's just doing a bunch of these studies. Um, again, there's things like this where there's an obvious light here. So this is where we can start to really evaluate and say, okay, well, it'd be nice to have a little bit of a shadow or a light, a light, uh, a light shape here, just to kind of play up that this edge. So I'm going to do that. Just so we can really play up that that edge of his hand. But I definitely want to simplify. So anything that's that's relatively in shadow. I definitely want to group it as much as I can so it doesn't get too distracting. Like this stuff here, I'm probably going to want to group it. So I'm just going to put on that soft gradient here and just kind of group, group the values down. Because I don't think we need as much detail here. There you have it. There's number two. Okay. Last but not least, our third final study, and then we'll move on to uh, to the some of the other stuff. So something like this, um, you know, you can actually just go ahead and block everything out. Again, just like what we did and just leave the areas of light and just refine it. Again, 
for those of you who really want that nice subtlety here, this is where you can slow down and illustrate the exactness in the face. And I'm actually using a, I've actually softened the edges here of my brush. So I can kind of get these nice, these nice uh, soft, softer edges. Because there's a lot of soft shadow shapes here. And even here, you see across the clothing here, this is where I'm going to capitalize on that, the soft edge. And I want something more or less like that. And then we can revert back to our hard edge brush. And I just go back and on top. Get some of these folds and stuff like that. Get all this right here is probably going to be in black and shadow, so I'm going to just simplify all this stuff. See, this is where I don't want to worry too much about these mid tones back here, these darker values and these darker tones. Again, pure graphic read. need just a little bit more light shape on the cheek here so let's just open that up just a little bit we'll do something like that and then just block all this stuff in in black these are like the easiest studies however um, these studies are actually one of the most impactful just because the subject matter of what we're looking at the character is so clear and it's it's this kind of stuff that allows us to when we go on top of our own own image our own illustration we're able to simplify and create a very impactful impactful image just through simple graphics just like this I know there's all these planes on the face and, and forms and stuff like that, but I'm almost not going to even worry about all that detail. And all those, all those lighting scenarios, I just want to get the simple read of our character. And call it done. There you have it. There is our character. Okay. So, took us a little while to get there. Um, each one took approximately probably uh, you know 10 15 minutes probably more longer you know due to my uh, my explanation and all that stuff like that but um, something that I want you guys to do is before you get into 
doing your own shots is you know just take a moment and let's just do a couple of studies um, and the studies can be as very simple as as what what I'm showing here or what I've demonstrated um, and again the whole goal is just to have a really really nice understanding of graphic read and um, just kind of just kind of get a, a good handle on on how to simplify and uh, create really nice frames um, based off of an existing an existing film and then from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and actually do our own set and uh, and go from there alright so let's consolidate this stuff here and we have a couple of these guys and I just wanted to show you guys the range here but I, I think I think you guys understand it for the most part um, there is one in particular that I'll show you guys um, as an extra extra little demo here but this one the way I utilize this kind of shot you guys might see this and say okay well how does it work in in this scenario because that is relatively a very very light image well first off what I do is I crunch the values um, but more importantly I try to simplify everything that we see and here what I see here is a very very simple ground plane and I see the shape of a house you know more or less kinda like this and once I establish the shape of the house then I'm gonna establish just some of the details like the the rooftop here this little uh, sort of architectural detail like this little bell tower thing okay and then the structures holding up the bell And then we're gonna have a little bit of a softer edge here on the on the bottom, and I'm not gonna even worry about all these little details of of our uh, of the house or this little church. And I'm just gonna mark down or note just some of the some of the details here. It's it's a little hard to make out, and I'm seeing just some distant structures, but mainly it's just this tree. And I'm going to do my best to kind of illustrate this really gnarled looking tree structure. Trees are one of the hardest things to draw, for me at least. It's, it's like figure drawing on crack or something. The forms are so strange. And there's so much, there's so much gesture. I'm sure for some of you, it's probably a walk in the park, but it is, it is a weakness of mine. Okay, so just kind of getting in the basic, the basic gesture of this here um, but what I wanted to show you guys in this case is how I'm simplifying and how I just actually uh, created this shot just using the black and white values now again there's this image right here is very low key in the sense that that it's it's it doesn't has it doesn't have much dark range but I need to I need to consolidate and create create that range Got all these gnarled looking um, structures here. Uh, 
Um, but what I was going to say is basically, if you guys have shots like this, this is where you want to consolidate as much as you can of the values. And then you want to use a soft brush in this in this sense, in this case. And this is where I'm actually going to just do a simple gradient, just like that. And this is this is basically the way I wanted to utilize my soft brush. It's just to kind of get the get the indication of light being going from light to dark. And that's all I really wanted to show you guys, uh, but you can see this is more the graphic, the graphic representation, and this is with it having a gradient. All right, cool. So let's just do a quick recap here. Um, so this is just our initial film study, and I wanted to show you guys the process of going from, you know, studying and simplifying using some lines as a guideline but also using just some darker soft edges and this is kind of what I want to show you guys um, and also just thinking about editing down all of the shapes into very simple graphic reads okay and then from there um, if they're in case you have a scenario like this you want to simplify all of the details keep it as graphic as you can and then actually do something that's more representative of just the overall lighting scenario, the lighting graphic. And that's basically how we want to go about lighting this, this concept. Um, I will show you guys just some of the, uh, the other examples of what I did here. This is from the previous post, um, but basically this was This was a study of the Maleficent one. And you can just see here how it was simplified. And actually there's no gradients in this one. I kept it very straightforward. Now if there if there were gradients and I were to apply gradients, it would actually be just in these darker areas. <coughs> and I would almost just use it to kind of soften up kind of the light, the light edge just to keep things relatively a bit less harsh but still nice and graphic just kind of eliminate areas of and that's that's all it really does for us <clears throat> and when I take out the two, you can just see how graphically it's still the same. However, we're creating kind of these nice soft edges. And this is basically what I wanted to show you guys. Okay. All right. Now, with this said, let's get on to doing some of our own compositions. All right. So let's get started into creating our own frames here. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'd love to kind of use some of our some of our thumb, initial thumbnails um, as kind of a, a way to build a visual library for our own shots. So let's just go ahead and do something like this. Let's grab a couple of these and see what we got. Oops. Okay, we got these, and let's grab one more. Okay, let's grab uh, one more here. I'm gonna grab this. Let's grab this Maleficent one. This is great. Okay, so with these, what I want to do is I actually just want to look at the way the shot handle light and dark shadow shapes and that's one of the most the one of the most important things for me to take away from this is just the way it's it actually utilized the light and shadow shapes um, 
So starting off with just this one here, I'll turn this off. <clears throat> we have a very identifiable silhouette with kind of more of a, a softer gradient tone. So we're going to do our own shot using that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you guys to create a simple white background and just sketch in our own our own concept here and I'm thinking of like kind of this this uh, this idea of this rover of some sort um, we'll keep it with like a, a space theme and this rover is on this ledge kind of overlooking a canyon and I'm gonna dutch the camera angle obviously as you can see it's, it's a bit definitely a bit disorientating but I'm gonna go with kind of this this concept here Maybe we'll keep it three wheeled or something. Maybe something like that. But like kind of a vehicle idea with our little our little character, our astronaut character. I'm gonna do a series of these little astronaut characters here. Kind of similar to um, our past demo. Maybe the uh, I don't know. Maybe we can we can change the orientation of this this vehicle and notice how loose I'm actually going. Again, this is all this is all just kind of keeping it fairly loosey goosey. Okay. Now once we have our sketch, this is where I want to take the time to block in the shadow shapes. So since we're going with this kind of concept, I'm literally going to block in all of my darker values. and it's literally going to be more of a silhouette there's not going to be much light and shadow detail I'm going to go off of more of this uh, silhouette shape Even this cliff here is going to be all in silhouette. This is probably going to be the most simple, straightforward.
concept. All right, so we got our little astronaut dude. Block him in. And he's going to be silhouetted as well. Pose him like that. Maybe there's like some ties or something, some oxygen kind of apparatus kind of tethered to our character. And maybe it's just some like rock structures here. You know, kind of like off into the distance. And it, it's funny how like this stuff seems a lot quicker to do than studying. Only because it's literally my my own composition. And you know, I'm not necessarily trying to get in any accuracy because it's just whatever that's in my head. Um, maybe we can have like some sort of like some river valley or canyon. Okay. There you have it. We have our very simple silhouette. Now, with this, now I want to actually add in my lighting my lighting pass. Which is going to be this. Cuz this is kind of what the effect we want. And I'm going to just do something like this. And that's generally kind of the concept. I want just a little bit of, of light coming back. I can slightly erase away. But for the most part, that's generally kind of the shot that I want to depict using the same sort of lighting scenario here. Let's go ahead and refine just a little bit of of this guy here. And there you have it. Our very very first composition using this this sort of scenario. So let's go ahead and do another one. So we have one So let's go off of our uh, this Maleficent one that we that we all liked, or that I liked. Start off with a blank canvas here, and again, um, we can decide to draw it out, but this time, I'm just gonna kind of free ball it. That's even a term. And I'm just going to create my own graphic composition using the same sort of lighting scenario. But this time, I kind of want this sort of more natural type of landscape of like rocks and mounds and stuff like that to be kind of the basis of of my aesthetic. something like that and then we'll have our little our, our character our guy here right here in the center
thinking it might be cool if our <coughs> if we had our astronaut or our little space guy right here maybe we'll put him right here slightly off center kind of walking up or finding this this opening for the very for the very first time Maybe he's holding like a gun or something. Like some sort of like pulse rifle. And then we want, I'm gonna kind of continue his, uh, this little breathing device. And then continue drawing out maybe just the shadow. And again, I have I have a, an opportunity here to kind of kind of play with a little bit of the uh, the structures here, just to add in a little bit more light and shadow shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and add in just some some lighting that this side of the cliff might be getting. almost imagining like you know maybe our character here is actually entering or looking into uh, kind of like a a light something light pool coming through a cave maybe that's what we're seeing And then just to really play up the edges, how we how we talked about earlier, this is where I'm gonna turn my brush into a softer edge and just kind of play up some of the darker shadow bits here. Just to kind of have that soft edge look. So not everything is too so not everything is too punchy. Okay, we can go here and just refine just a little bit of the edge here of our silhouette or our character. Maybe just some interesting indication of a design of our backpack of some sort. And I'm just going to go ahead and simplify 
what's around him, like his little little cracks and stuff, just to keep a really clean, simple graphic shape. So that the only thing that we see and that we can identify with is just the graphic nature. Maybe having a little bit more white negative shape here will help. All right, there you go. There we have it. Our second concept, our second image here. This one's relatively simple as well. Um, and again, I'm, I'm just kind of going off of what, what we have based off of our study. Okay? So this is kind of the general idea. This is basically, this is basically how, would, how I would actually approach um, doing some of these, these extended uh, you know, concepts based off of an existing, um, an existing frame just to, just to kind of uh, create or come up with our own our own series of of compositions or our own concepts um, so there you go we have a and we have B so let's go ahead and group this into our second lesson okay now <clears throat> Just to elaborate on this, um, I'm gonna. I'm actually going to take us to our second session, or our our third third part of the demo, and that is basically coming up with our own compositions. And this is where um, let's go ahead and just do four four frames here. And I'm actually going to come up with series of my own designs and my own compositions here and let's go ahead and actually start off by either one we can sketch it out or two start off with something very abstract so I'm gonna go ahead and utilize the two up here for coming up with our own um, concept by sketching it out and these can be relatively rough right um, and rough as in it can be a simple idea simple concept I'm gonna add more of our space guys here. And this actually is a shout out to uh, one of my students, um, Michael Raiti, who's actually, who's actually doing a very similar theme and so, you know, I'm going to give the credit out to him for, for kind of setting the tone for this whole uh, space theme. I can't take, I can't, I can't take the credit for this, for the subject matter. So thank you, Michael, for uh, inspiring, inspiring me for, um, for doing this, for these types of, this type of subject matter. Uh, but yeah, this is, I definitely want kind of this idea of like these guys These space soldiers kind of walking in and holding a gun, like a scope or something.
all the gear right here and maybe just another guy right off looking off into the other distance here just kinda like scouting or, or kinda looking watching everyone else's back Okay, so we have something like that as one idea. We'll do another idea where maybe there's there's kind of this like large opening of some sort. Maybe he has to actually kneel down to get in. Or there, maybe there's just like this big kind of structure and this guy is actually like calling, calling them over or something. So this part is going to take a little bit of of your own your own research and exploration because again this is this is based off of your own concept and not necessarily you know something that you're studying. However, the same principles do apply when it comes to the application portion. We have our other guy way back here in the distance. Another little astronaut dude. Okay, so when we have something like this, the first thing I'm going to start off with is starting with our black and white silhouettes. All right, just graphically thinking about it. Now, the thing that I want to uh, solidify is basically where the light direction is going to come from. So I'm going to say that the light is going to come from here. So if that's the case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and mark this stuff down as being the darker value. say light is seeping through from this side and I'm using the softer edge of my brush to keep it relatively simple and graphic just as a start And then I'm going to go ahead and actually go in and start drawing out my figures. Start 
drawing in our shadows here and also just kind of some of where the areas where we're going to have definite light is probably hitting part of the clothing here and areas where it's going to be in shadow which is going to be all of all of the chest here and I have an indication of kind of like a a sniper scope of some sort And again, this is just using all of our drawing as, as a way to kind of visually guide us. So if it wasn't for the drawing, we would be in complete lost land. It would just be a complete guessing game. Maybe some sort of like head unit thing. rest of the suit here maybe just some pockets and stuff like that that are open Do that. Now, if it ever gets too like uh, like busy, you know, you, you always have the freedom of turning on on and off the uh, the lights or the the lines. I mean, just to keep things relatively simple. I like keeping on the lines just to just ensure like you know where I'm going with with my actual graphic sketch Something like that. A little light here. And then all of the, the rest of the body here can actually be in silhouette of our character. Double check and see how it looks, and that's kind of what we're that's kind of where we're ending up with right now. So it's not too bad. Let's just go ahead and simplify. This is where I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off our um, 
a line drawing so we can understand kind of the shapes we're creating the shapes as in like the shadow the shadow shapes ahead and add a little bit of light in areas where you need to indicate just a little bit more detail. Maybe add some pouches back here for this guy. And we have another character here. Can't forget about this guy. Let's go ahead and save this out. Uh, but who's definitely going to have the most amount of shadow? So we're going to play with his silhouette, especially for the face here. This is what I really want. I want this kind of like lost edge right here with these shadow shapes. This is what's going to make it actually somewhat complex and nice. I can bring in just a little bit of that detail, <coughs> add a new layer. just to spell out any additional highlights and things like that. For doing lines like this, like I actually use uh, the stroke, the stroke selection, just to do like really simple graphic lines. Stroke, and then you can do like one to two pixels. Generally, work fairly well. Okay, and when we have that. Starting to have a nice, nice range of detail and stuff. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my line layer and notice all the all the white here. That's kind of like a little, a little uh, random and kind of sloppy in my opinion. Um, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more light shapes. just to help kind of beef up a little bit of our silhouette here.
Okay. But some of this light shape here, a lot of these light shapes, I'm actually going to go ahead and dial this down using our soft brush. just to have a little bit of a nicer gradient. Actually, we can create another another layer here. Just use this to kind of control. But I kind of just want a nice simple gradient there. And then this is an opportunity as well to even add a little bit more detail and also just kind of look and evaluate our image and see what else what else needs a little bit more a little bit more um, clarity. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and actually block out the silhouette here. more of this negative shape and actually go here oops and maybe even erase or bring back some of the shadow shape here just to kind of help give me a little bit of of a nice nice graphic here bring this back just a little bit just a hair Okay, cool, there we have it. We're composition number two. And anything that's in shadow that I have an opportunity to kind of add a little bit of a highlight there, I'm definitely going to utilize that. That's composition number two. It's looking fairly, fairly good kind of the way the way I wanted and it was based off of a sketch so it's actually not too too off um, let's go ahead and do our other one here but this time um, we have we have our sketch here um, and we can go ahead and actually use this as an underlay And do this one. This one I'm going to keep it relatively simple, and it's going to be just more of a more of a silhouetted kind of deal. Then you can just see kind of the way I'm carving out my shape here. But I'm going to carve out our character and leave 
our character in white in this scenario since it's being silhouetted or since it's being backlit like this I mean this is this would be the strategic way of handling this kind of lighting scenario we got like kind of these weird structures back here add that in and maybe just even on the ground here add a little bit of softer a softer lighting scenario adding a little bit more negative shape here shape here to, to add a little bit of interest and then this is where I'm gonna add our lighting now I'm assuming that a lot of the light here especially for this character is gonna be backlit so we're gonna go with more of a silhouette kind of base for this character way back here and we're gonna give him also kind of the whole space marine gun look kind of standing guard this guy's obviously coming more forward but again I really want to play up the concept of light coming from this this kind of a uh, this shape back here behind us. And everything else leading up to it is just going to be in shadow. So this is going to be a much more simpler composition as you can see. I'm actually kind of also making sure that the that the bubble helmet is actually a lot more lighter. So I'm going to bump that up in value. Again, we have our main character here. Definitely put him in shadow. keep this a bit more simple and try to eliminate a 
lot of the details here and I'm gonna just turn this off and you can see that for the most part the guys in the back are reading really well now it's this here that's getting a little confusing so this is where we're gonna have to do a lot of consolidating and really figure out okay what is the focal point so I definitely want this gun that he's pointing to be fairly legible so I'm gonna add a lot of my light my light source here and I'm gonna add just a little bit more more information to his hand the orientation of the hand let's go ahead and do that let's turn this off got the hand here Notice how I'm actually taking actually a lot of it out. Just get this to read. And then we're going to just kind of rim light the areas where we want to bring back just a little bit more detail. And here on this side, it's just going to be all silhouette, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. If anything, I could probably bring back just a little bit more silhouette information. Again, these are all just big abstract shapes. And here, we can add just a little bit more information on the hand holding the gun. Maybe just a little bit more shadow on this hand, this arm. Again, sometimes it's actually it's better to to hide things a bit in more silhouette than to spell everything out. You just only want to spell out exactly what you need. And I think this is all I really need.
something like that. There you go. There is our second composition. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some really quick ones for you guys to, to, to kind of get a good gesture or good understanding of how I'm gesturing these ones. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just start off by adding in just some quickie details here or just shadow shapes. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and actually do um, just some, my own version of, of what, we was, what we would actually see here. So these ones are gonna go a lot quicker and, and you guys will find that, you know, as you do more of these, you'll, you'll start to see how much, how abstract you can start to get, but how quick this process can actually be, um, you know, when we start getting into more of the more of the development of these keyframes. Just so it's not like this, you know, exact process every single time. This one I'm thinking might be a much more simpler concept of our character here. Holding a gun. and just being lit from the side. This one's really, really simple, right? You guys can see how I generated this one. And the background here is actually completely random but notice how notice how we give it just a little bit of context by adding a character or identifiable structures so if this we want to make it a little bit more something then we just add just more detail to make it somewhat identifiable of what it is I just need to kind of fix that hand here. Something like that should do. Okay, cool. There we go, we have one. And maybe I can just add a little figure back here. And sometimes it can be really simple too. 
not everything has to be this crazy lit kind of environment but it can it can be you know something more simple and even something like this which which I really see a lot of opportunity for just much more much more of a simpler composition even if it was like you know some sort of like we see like some structures here in the distance maybe just some crazy shapes but this one can be much more simple in the sense that what if we're only seeing just our little figures here you know walking got the the one that's lagging behind now just a little bit of a softer shadow for some of this for some of these shapes here and I'm just going to refine some of this stuff There you go, much more simple composition and approach for how to do these. Um, I ho really hope you guys enjoyed this process. Um, please let me know if you guys have any questions. And uh, feel, free to, feel free to email me at jp4johnpark at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, thank you guys again for, for, you know, for watching and supporting these tutorials. It's always it's always really fun to to kind of to do these, um, but more importantly, just to see you know what what you guys create out of it. I mean, I, I was able to see fortunate enough to see some examples of you know some of the stuff done from other artists, you know, based on these tutorials, and it's so cool. You know, they they take it to a completely different level, much more much more elaborate than than what I would have thought of. So please, please, you know, sh I would love to see or share anything that you guys um, do for this and the story you guys build. There we go. We have our, our little soldier dudes kind of walking about into the darkness. All right, guys. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again.